Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Parker and welcome to an all new VTV show. We have a packed show for you guys today. Can you believe we have a four day week this week and next week and then one more week until spring break? We'll talk about this later in the show. But before we start today, let's see who's celebrating a birthday. celebrating a birthday today. We will start the show off with a look at the Word of Mouth Showcase, where students got to express their original poetry and narratives. Let's take a look. This Wednesday night on February 28th, Word of Mouth had yet another great showcase of their original works. Ms. Mustafa explains what goes on in Word of Mouth and how to get involved. It was a fantastic night. In the two years that we've been doing this, this is our fourth event, this was po probably the biggest turnout. So we had a wonderful class of seniors who performed and poetic expressions and then some newcomers. So it was pretty wonderful. Participating in Word of Mouth was very encouraging as someone who's never actually read in front of a, I guess you could say formal setting, because the audience was just very supportive and if anyone stuttered or had to take a pause to actually get themselves together, the audience was there for it. They were clapping, uh, snapping, just really showing support for the reader and I think that was just a great experience. Many students have used this opportunity to open up about things they're struggling with or experiences that they feel are important to express. The Poetic Expressions Club used word of mouth as an important practice for their state competition after winning first place last year. Um, so we participate in Louder Than a Bomb, which is a big festival for poets around the Chicagoland and any area. And this was really good practice for us given that we have a competition this Saturday and it will be our second belt because our last belt we got first place. So we, um, yeah, it's just going to be a really good opportunity and we're just hoping that we can make it far in our next belt and maybe even to semifinals. Make sure to come out to the next showcase to see what word of mouth is all about. For VTV, I'm Josie Wankis. Congrats to all the writers and performers that took the stage at the word of mouth. There has been a lot of controversy about guns in schools. The latest proposal wants teachers to carry guns as a way of protection in schools, but this has generated a lot of arguments and discussions. We went to the teachers and the students to get their thoughts and opinion. Here's Sam O'Gally with the story. Ever since the tragic shooting that took place at Parkland, Florida, many ideas and opinions have been put forth on how to address the issue of mass shootings. One idea is to arm teachers with guns, which is an idea that has raised a lot of eyebrows. As a result, teachers and students around HF have their own opinions on whether they think arming teachers is a good idea. How do you feel about teachers being armed with guns who have military experience or special training? Um, I disagree with it because I feel like if someone comes in armed, are you guys just going to have a shootout? It doesn't make sense. We have to do something to stop these school shootings that are happening. We want to keep people safe. Uh, that's not my preferred method, I guess, to accomplish that goal. I feel like it's kind of a good idea, but then at the same time it's not because you got, you got those crazy teachers in the school who, you know, get fed up with kids, so you never know what they'll do with the gun, you know. I think if they have prior military experience, I would be okay with that. Um, overall, though, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to arm teachers. I totally disagree because no matter what guns should be in school regardless no matter what the experience is it's just gonna have more detrimental effects on the students and just the people here. I think teachers just like anybody else can succumb to the pressure of daily life and we really don't know anybody by looking at them what they're going through. I think probably it would be better if we had some kind of training. It's unnecessary like the drills are enough like yeah some students end up dead but the drills like they're practice enough for things to not get 
as out of hand. I do trust a lot of my colleagues, but I'm not crazy about faculty members doing double duty with weaponry as well as education. Gun violence is an issue with guns, and I feel like teachers do not hold the responsibility to protect their, their students in that way if there's other procedures we can take. I think it's really unfortunate that there's lawmakers talking about what teachers should be doing when they've never been teachers themselves. It's really redundant to try to say that a teacher is able to have a gun even if they have background experience. I think it could be workable. The question is, what are the parameters for it? The other question is, is whether students will feel safe in an environment where a teacher, even a well-trained teacher, has a gun. I think responding to the idea that millions, well, tons of children are being murdered in school with guns by adding more guns is probably the most backwards decision ever possibly made. While this issue of arming teachers has had mixed opinions, one thing is for sure, people clearly want a solution to prevent another tragic mass shooting. For VTV, I'm Sam Ogali. We'll keep a close eye on the decision our government makes in the next few months concerning this highly controversial topic. We've seen this segment time and time again called HF Style, where people showcase their style and tell us who and what has influenced their style. This week, we'll showcase Cameron Riley. Let's check it out. I remember like my freshman, sophomore year, I did not know how to dress in my opinion. And it was like kind of more when I I started to become more in tune with myself and my inner spirit, you know, just who I am and stuff like that. I pretty much started to mess with fashion more and the way that I look and everything like that. I would describe my style as kind of just stuff that I just like pretty much. I'm not really sure who I would say kind of similar to my style, but I know I like the way that ASAP Rocky dressed. I like the way he dressed. Um, I like the way uh, Lucas Sabat, I like the way he dressed too. He rock. I mean, I get my clothes from all different types of places. I mean, you got to shop online a lot to be honest, order stuff from different places. and. Sometimes I thrift though too. Yeah, it's a career interest, definitely. You know, I, I plan to have a future in both music and fashion. Those are both my passions, you know, too. And yeah, I'm definitely pursuing both. That's why I put a lot of time into both fashion and music. I think that you should just do what I think everybody else does and what I do, pretty much. And I should just wear stuff that you like and be yourself and, you know, be groovy, you did. <laughs> and then I also got, I got some lucky charms too for you. I got this, this one of my lucky charms. This a lucky charm. And this a lucky charm too. This right here. My name is Cameron Riley, but you can call me Caveman, and this is HF Style. We're on day two of Respect Week, and hopefully you're wearing the right color today. Let's see what's in store for tomorrow. Today we're wearing yellow to represent Down Syndrome. Down Syndrome is a mental and physical disability. Someone with Down Syndrome has an extra chromosome, which is chromosome 21. The physical disabilities is upward slanted eyes, shortness and growth, and low muscle tone. They also have uh, slower mental growth. Tomorrow we're going to be wearing orange to represent ADD and ADHD. That's all we have for you guys today, but join us next week for an all-new VTV show. From everyone here at VTV, I'm Lauren Parker. Have a great day, Jeff.